Hey, welcome back to the channel. All right, that's it. We've got two videos left in this fun series we've been doing in December where I pull my Discord server, I give you their rankings as they present them. I then, of course, also give you mine. Have a lot of fun with it, we talk about it. And then, of course, I always wanna know what you think, what you're interested in, what you think we got right, what you think we got wrong. And we just ranked them. And I just left it open as a format intentionally. I said, the best. And I've learned so much about how people are playing this game and what it is they value, right? Not everyone values the same things I do. I've learned a ton. Let's jump into it. The best of 2022. And I, I want to preface this before we get any farther by saying like, this is a phenomenal year for champions. I think it's a phenomenal year for growth in the game. Uh, and we've even got champions who we know are good. Like as a community was like their spot right in the middle. Right, We know he's good. Uh, Steel 22, the strands been showing me, telling me, showing a lot of us on YouTube. He's good. We're just not totally sure how and where and why and where this will go in the future. They've been showing us what they've been showing us, but it looks like there's going to be more and more applications. Let's go ahead and get this started. So the honorable mention, these are gonna be champions that don't make my list, and they also don't make my server's list. Also, because we did this over the course of like two to three weeks, you're gonna show or see some uh, evolution of this. Some of it may be responding to what I said in my own video or the fact that a lot of you have asked to join the server, be part of it, have some fun. It's got a great culture. We are a little stripped with our culture of, of supportiveness, friendliness, that sort of thing. But a lot of you have joined and really fit in well. So I think we're gonna see an evolution that I'm gonna point it out right here with our honorable mentions for the best in 2022. We've got Toad, he is good, don't get me wrong, I think he's fine. Sam Wilson, uh, I've talked at length about my issues with him. I see why people do like him, but I, I think there's just issues there. A lot of it has to do with his flow. There's tons of utility, but I just don't think his kit comes together that well when you're playing him. That's the issue. I think you have to really think a lot about how you're gonna bring things up, and I think that's part of the struggle. Of course, also then with the, the damage. I think the damage needs to be higher. Uh, and this is the one where I think there's just a lot of evolution here is uh wiccan now wiccan almost made the list for my tier uh for my server and he actually doesn't make my list either uh I, I as much as i love wiccan and i've talked to you about this and i told you when we did that video i'm like i don't know if i could put him up there that's two things it shows how strong 2022 is it also shows how strong 22 is and then i think also an evolution because my server had him i think as like the fourth best mystic champion in the game Maybe he is, maybe he is, and, and Mystic needs to grow a bit more, or he's just handling those specific problems for people, but then when they look at it as far as all the champions of 22, he just doesn't even make the list. Spidey Supreme, I've talked at length about him. I think he's gonna be a little more niche than Specialized, and in today's game, I don't think we want too many niche. It's gonna be rare when it comes up where you're like, yes, that's exactly who I wanna use. I wanna rank for them, or whatever the highest rank is at that time. And Mantis. Uh, as you know, some of you know, I've done a bit of a boomerang on her. I thought she was going to be phenomenal. Phenomenal. I thought she was going to be a Battlegrounds monster, maybe even some more use. Maybe not so great in questing uh, and long health, uh, big health pools, that sort of thing. I then pulled her, took her to rank 3, 6200, and I, I'm aware that the, uh, the meta that was being used in Gladiator Circuit with the root and all that was not good for her. But I did often line up a lot of SP2s with all of the various like mixed emotions and got off the guaranteed crit special two with the Furies. And it just was not doing for me an, a good enough amount of damage for all the work that I had put in to get her there. And uh, the, the defenders in Battlegrounds often require very certain sets of utility, uh, maybe uh, resistances, those sorts of things, right? We're talking about Korgs, Terax. Kingpins, Dr. Dooms, like these are the champions you're seeing in a very controlled environment. She's incredibly impressive. I think of it like if you got yourself a Ferrari, but then you showed up for the race and it's off road. It's like, yeah, your car is amazing and it's phenomenal and it's going to go straight and maybe handle some curves amazingly well. But as soon as you get off the pavement, you're gonna have a lot of problems and often in Battlegrounds and the defenders that are being presented to you and the notes that are being presented to you, it's similar to fill all this analogy. You're not playing on your on pavement anymore. You're off-roading and you need to be able to handle that terrain. That's my concern with her. I hope I'm wrong because I really do enjoy playing her. I think she's very cool, but that's my thoughts on her. So she didn't make my servers list and she's also not going to make mine. Okay, coming in at number 10 on my servers list, talk about a comeback story was Gore. And I made sure to put, when I listed him on there, I made sure to put 
in the buffed form. A lot of us did get to play it in 8.2. We've seen videos of it. A lot of people even liked him before that. I do think that the uh, friendly mode meta, right, in Battlegrounds, it really accentuated what he could do, how problematic he could be on defense and how strong he could be on offense. But that's before he was buffed. And then he's he's getting this buff. We've had a chance to play test it. it sounds like it's going to allow him to increase or keep his buffs a lot longer, upping his damage, making his ramp significantly less stressful. I don't know a ton about him. I kind of thought he wasn't very good. I wanted to wait for his buff. We talked about that in some of the monthly tier lists. So I was like, let's just see what comes our way. He's not good. I don't want to advise people to rank him up now. Let's see what the buff is like. People sound incredibly, incredibly happy with it. If this is the buff that ends up going live, I think it makes a lot of sense to have it at number 10. It does seem to, like they put a lot of thought into him, uh, as is common in 2022. Would not be surprising for them to throw some challenges at us that he is phenomenal for as we go through 2023 and beyond. So that makes a lot of sense to me. And then on my own list, I have Spot. I've seen enough from my buddy Strands. I've seen enough from Still22. Uh, Nerd and I have talked at length. It looks like he's going to be an absolute monster in Battlegrounds, a dual threat champion. And that's an important mode. I know not everyone loves it, but if you're good in Battlegrounds, you often tend to be good in War as well. Those are my two favorite modes in the whole game. And then typically you do find uses for them in story content and questing like that as well too. So we've covered almost the whole game now. He is unique. And so the fact that players like Steel and Strands have already found uses for him and ways to play him leads me to believe that as time goes on, and DLL did kind of predict this in his video, that there will continue to be applications. I'm very excited about Spot, and he's probably my most wanted pull as we look to the next featured crystal here in two months. Let's go ahead and look at my server's number nine champion. Okay, the number nine best champion according to my server is actually infamous Iron Man. I think he suffers a little bit from, you know, the same thing that uh, Wagneto, White Magneto, Wags, Posh suffers from in that they have a namesake or a similar character model who's just dominant. And as a result, it often feels like you're comparing those two, even though you really don't need to. There are two separate champions. You can rank them up, both up. You can play them both. And in this case, Infamous Iron Man is tech and regular Doom, Doctor Doom is mystic, and they do different things. That being said, regular Doom is so incredibly powerful. And plus, Infamous Iron Man was the, is the prestige king and a combination of I know, uh, Iron Man and Doctor Doom, two of my favorite characters from comics, the you know MCU, all of that. So I think it makes a lot of sense. He came in with massive hype, and it would have been almost impossible to live up to that. I did pull him. I went for him. I got him. I pulled him. I do really like him, and I know that there are rotations involving like the SP3 and things like that that can produce even bigger damage numbers. I've had some fun with him in Battlegrounds. I don't think either of the metas was amazing for him. In War, I think we're still often assigning Nimrod. That's more of a Nimrod problem than it is an infamous Iron Man problem. So I also don't think Kabam made this champion, made him the Prestige King to let him just sit there. He's actually going to be the eighth best champion on my tier list. And a lot of that is projection. I think, you know, if I had to pick just one champion to have for what I've done so far in 2022, I would pick Wiccan over infamous Iron Man any day of the week. But I don't think you make this champion. I think he's incredibly well made. I don't think even the prestige he has and not create roles for him. I think we're going to get the next feature crystal, which he'll be in. More people will play him. More content will come out. And infamous Iron Man, when we look back at this, when I'm going to look back at this in June of 2023, I would not be surprised if he's a lot higher the list or if we're at least talking about him in a significantly more positive way. As far as my number nine champion, I actually have Titania, but we'll talk about her when she's on screen in the next flip. Okay, my Discord server had Titania coming in at number eight. We've talked about her at length uh, on this channel. Somehow she's been someone, despite me not doing much video on her at all, I've talked about her quite a bit, mainly because she's been used to kick my butt in Battlegrounds. And I also said in some tier lists, and I was like, I'm not sure what the role is for her yet, but... Any champion that applies that many debuffs can get that many passive furies going and then can go indestructible, unstoppable, and unblockable at the same time. There's going to be a role for her. And then it felt like within days, Karate Mike was using her solo EOP bosses. And then within weeks, he was using her to kick my butt in a Battlegrounds tournament. I'm, being, I'm seeing her now being used in war. We had talked about her, the fact that she is buff immune. She's not a Spider-Man 99 replacement, but they think of it like a Venn diagram where they do cross over 
in that buff immunity. That's a big, big deal. Indestructible, unblockable, unstoppable in one package that hits as hard as she does and lands as many debuffs as she does. If you spec into mastery, that is reducing the damage you're gonna take back should you make a mistake or things like that. It's gonna reduce that significantly. I think she's just an example of how great champions are being made in 2022, that she's actually only the number eight champion. I have her coming in at number nine. A lot of that is just due to newness. I could see her rising up the ranks, but as I look at the ranks of 2022, it is a stellar, stellar class. Let's go ahead and jump to the number seven champion on my servers list. Okay, this isn't really a shock, I don't think, because I'm aware of the community's perception on him. There's people who just love him like I do, and then there's a lot of people who really just don't like playing him. If you don't like playing the champion, that's one of the things I always say when I give rank of advice, if you don't enjoy him, don't rank him, because you're never going to play them. So I, I get that he's number seven. He does actually represent a bit of a tear jump. He had 136 points. Uh, yeah, 136 points to Titania, who had 90. So there is a bit of a tear jump there. So keep that in mind. That being said, I have him much higher. I'm going to have him up at number five. You know me. I've talked at length about how great he is, right? We'll go as quickly as I possibly can here to uh, give a synopsis of it. But basically, he can get up a slow very, very easily. That slow makes it so he can't miss. He also has a relatively powerful wither that if you get him awakened, he can get up to six of them. If you put points into dexterity, he does it exceptionally well. He, he His ramp does take a little while, kind of, but if that's only if you look at it as like a progressive amount of health bar being gone, because what he really does is he can create these huge explosions with his whiplash detonating them. And if you're unable to do that, he still can whittle down health pools, right? But the SB1s and the medium light, medium ex uh, explosion of the whiplash. I've done quite a few videos on him. I did get out an essentials video. If you're like kind of confused, why does Vega like him so much? Make sure you watch that one. Uh, I think it does a really great job of covering it. I have used him in War 2. I think he is phenomenal. I am going to recognize though that he is not everyone's cup of tea and that he can be slightly difficult to play. I actually have him as my number five rated champion, and I do have him kind of like a tier list above or a tier above where my own servers got him. My number seven champion on the year is Omega Sentinel. She's a really tough one to uh, grade and talk about, but I will talk about when we get to her on my server's rankings. Okay, my server had Omega Sentinel as a number six champion. Her and Quicksilver were almost tied. In fact, they basically were. So just consider them kind of being in the same place. Now, one of the things we talked about on the server, though, is kind of like how we had Gore being buffed, is Omega Sentinel being fixed. It feels like she's constantly in a state of being broken, and there's some really smart players, I'm not going to quote them because I don't know if they would want me doing that, who say, like, her pause mechanic actually doesn't even work properly as far as the various ways of pausing or refreshing the debuffs. That would be massive for her. One of the biggest complaints, and I understand it, I think it's legitimate as far as, like, if you were somehow going to make her better, is it can be a little bit stressful to keep her debuffs up, especially in certain matches where you're really or wanting to go quick, like Battlegrounds or something like that. But as my friend PWF from 4Loki and you know BG2 Planner War Leaders uh, made it to the knockout stage of the Vega Battlegrounds Championship that we're running right now, phenomenal player has shown in matchups like that, if you really need to, you can just make sure you get your debuffs up, go to your SB3, you're going to land all those incinerates or plasmas, depending on what uh, class you're facing, and then you can just end your combos in a light. He's used that to take out Dr. Dooms and things like that when the, uh, I forget what the global is called, but he really needed to utilize his heal block, and he just melded the champion. So she's phenomenal. She's great. I think she lives in the shadow of Nimrod a little bit, but I think that only matters if you're really considering her just a mutant hunter, and she's a lot more than that. She does get a little more powerful against them, and, and I respect that. I get it, but She's incredibly, incredibly tanky. She doesn't have a large health pool, but she's incredibly tanky getting up all those armor ups. And she's not working properly right now in the game. It's very frustrating. I actually tried to use her to take out EOP Havoc, and I couldn't because she kept losing her armor ups due to the auto block triggering when it shouldn't have. Uh, but I think if Kabam gets her right, and if especially if the that pausing, uh, refreshing of her debuffs gets fixed, like I, I think it's supposed to, I think you're going to see her move way up in these general rankings. She is a phenomenal, phenomenal champion. I, I really do like her. And then as far as my own personal number six, and we'll talk about her when we get to her in the server's uh, ranking, is Valkyrie. She's obviously fantastic. And I do think we're about to kind of make a bit of a tear jump as far as rankings are concerned. 
Okay, coming in at number five for my server's rankings is Valkyrie. Now, she's only 146 points where Quicksilver and Mega Sentinel are like right around 136. So it's not a massive tier jump, but I personally do feel like there is one here. One of the things that's most interesting about her is she, I think, burst on the scene again from now like a champion like Bitter Steel and, and others who've used her, but Bitter Steel really did a phenomenal job showcasing it quite a bit. Was the battle, Battlegrounds meta. And, you know, she could keep earning power because of the rich get richer node. Now, the fact is, though, is that just maybe accentuated her damage a little bit. But I know that, like, Bitter Steel showed in other metas, her still doing phenomenal damage. I think it made it so you just couldn't head into the block all of the time. You kind of, though, that seems like how she's designed to be played, or at least it's a, it's a style. There's a lot of her kit that's not just hitting into the block. The thing I love about her and why I think she might be a little bit timeless, and again, it's just going to depend on what Kabam throws at us and how hard those challenges are with other champions that aren't like her, is she can just get around nodes and defenders. You can just get around it. Well, if you only have to hit them in the block and you can do good enough damage and she does plenty of it, that's a value that's almost impossible to take away. You know, we talk about champions like Archangel and things like that where they can just turn off nodes. Well, she can just do the same way in the sense that she can just get around it. It doesn't matter often. So I think that's going to be almost like a timeless value. I really do love her. I will eventually be taking mine to rank four. And I was so excited when I pulled her. I have her as number six. But like I said, I feel like that's a bit of a tear jump. And I'm placing six and five. And you'll see as I go in my own personal rankings above the Omega Sentinels, Infamous Iron Man, Titania, and Spot. For me, there's just currently a very obvious invisible difference. It doesn't mean it might not get blurred as the game progresses, but that's how I have it right now. And then uh, at number five, we already talked about, about him uh, quite a bit, and I talk about him even more in my science video, is Quicksilver. I, I think he has an argument to be the best champion of 2022, but I also can't discount all of the negative things that people feel about him as far as the play style, how difficult he is to learn the slowness of the combos and all that. I, I do that. I respect that. And I think it is very, very valid. And it's not just like a personal complaint or whining or something like that. It is true and real. So I do need to reflect that. He is my number five best champion of 2022. But I, I in many ways think he really could be the number one champion of 2022. And I think time's only going to tell. I love him, but you already know that. Coming in at number four in my service rankings was actually Scorpion. This one shocked me. I was fully prepared for him to be number one. Uh, I think they had him at number one in the science class. So uh, this just shows you too, like who's voting, how they're looking at things. And then it's also tough, like having gone through this this much in this month, measuring champions against each other. I think it also matters like who's on the side of them, who you're measuring them against and what challenge you face that day maybe even. Also new people joining the server can influence the vote quite a bit. Um, and there have been a lot of people who've joined in the last month. Scorpion comes in at number four. And the other thing I think to mention is four, three, and two. Number two champion had 298 votes. Scorpion had 290. When there's that many votes, eight votes really does not mean very much. In fact, it's not even eight votes. It's eight points, which could be uh, a very, very, very tiny difference. He's amazing, right? We, we've talked about him so much. Uh, and we went into real detail on, this, on the science list. But I will just say, you know, people ask, does he need to be awakened? No, he absolutely does not. There's some nice niche utility about blocking uh, unblockables. I think when he has his taunt up, which is cool. And I've used that in war before. And the other part of it is really nice if you want to use him like in battlegrounds or something like that. You can land your SP2, get the petrified. It'll help you end at 100% health or a higher percentage health than you otherwise would have. Shifting immunities, shifting damage sources. He is phenomenal. And you are going to see him when we talk about the just the top champions in the whole game uh, as it stands in 2022. So he's definitely going to be there. As far as my number four champion for the whole uh, for the whole year of 2022, and this feels wild to put him at number four, but I had Quicksilver at number five. So, you know, that just shows you how good this year is. Is that Gallon? You know I love Gallon. I was the one saying, look, Quicksilver, Crystals with Gallon. I actually want Gallon more. And that's because, though, I think Gallon's just so dominant in war scenarios and in battlegrounds that health pool is just so phenomenal for him he can handle so many things I, we've talked at length about the difference between generalists and specialists and niche champions in this game uh on this channel right and i've talked to you about how much i'm wanting more and more specialists 
he almost blurs the line between generalists and specialists, and that shows you how strong he is. But he is great in his specialty, and then he is strong in other places that maybe he's not exactly designed for, but boy, is he amazing. It doesn't, you know, the the BG meta that was available when he first came out made it, accentuated him, made it a little more eye-catching. I know a lot of people got worried he was going to be nerfed, but I really meant it when I told you so many times. I was like, I'm not worried. I'm not worried because I think this is exactly what he's designed to do. He's well suited for the game as it is now and where it's headed. Uh, and so, yeah, I have Gallon at number four. I'm so excited to talk about Gallon. I forgot to wait till we bring him up on screen, but I did the Gallon speech. So uh, I have him at number four. Let's jump to my server's number three champion. I just love Gallon. <laughs> okay, number three champion for server also shocked me. I was prepared for it to be Scorpion 1, Rintra 2. Like, I was 100%. I would have almost bet on that. Um, he is amazing, right? I told you in the, some other videos when we were doing mutant, I'm running out of superlatives and adjectives. If you have some other good ones, let me know. But he really is fantastic. We've talked at length on this channel about the emerging, uh, evolving relationship between mystics and cosmics and how neutralized champions, I felt like are becoming more and more important in this game as they, uh, as Kabam works on decreasing i guess let's say the prominence of nullifies and things like that but it's really nice because it's just spreading everything out that's why i like it it's giving other design spaces and things for us to do and we're not just bringing dr doom to every fight uh that requires anything a mystic might do the the biggest negative you can say about renter in my opinion is, is he doesn't have like a power control he's not power stealing power burning or any of these sorts of things but he's tanky as heck and he almost kind of gets around it by just healing back so much. I've shown this multiple times in various videos. I will eventually one day, I'm sure, eventually get out my uh, essentials video on him. I'm sorry that it just it just keeps hitting the back burner. Other stuff continues to come out, but he's phenomenal. I know I showed him in some more videos and I really, I can tell some people, I probably didn't explain it well enough, that there was a global node called Conduit that made it so you couldn't throw those big SP2s from him. And I know a lot of people are like, he's too slow. And you, why are you going to the SP3? And I was like, ah, I didn't explain that well enough clearly. Or maybe people just don't listen and that's fine. Um, but if you can just throw those SP1s early, if you're too worried about the power gains, can help you get to that SP2, get champions in the corner, play super, super aggressive, keep your neutralites up. That's one of the major reasons why you're bringing him. He's stronger against Cosmics with it. But his neutralize is good against non-cosmics as well too he's amazing he is absolutely amazing i have him as my number three champion as well so me and the server completely agree i think you could make the argument for him to be number one too i you're totally totally within uh reason for doing that let's go ahead and move on to my server's number two champion okay my, my server's number two champion is gallon i i love gallon uh if we're just talking about like my favorites to play, he's he's up there. I I still couldn't put him at number one, but you guys know why I'm sure by this point. Uh, I but I love him. Maybe I could put him at number one. I oh, he's just so good. He does so much damage, and he's just so outrageously well made. His flow is fantastic, right? We've talked about how you can throw your SP one if you want the incinerate off the SP two. You can do that. Uh, you can throw your SP one and then trigger the harvest for the second sp1 you can go to your sp3 if you really really need to i just love this champion his awaken ability is really nice i love these uh i love champions like this where they power up from their immunities because that means where you're already wanting to take them anyway they're then getting stronger from where you're already wanting to take them i think the magic number with him is like 120 or something like that but if you want to take him to 200 that's fine if it's like for prestige reasons and things like that you don't have to have him awakened but it is really nice it's part of what's kicking in that whole powering up from his immunities he's great he's fantastic if you don't have him i hope you get him very very soon i've talked about him enough though we do need to end this video eventually my number two champion for 2022 is scorpion i think he's phenomenal again another champion we've already talked about and then this is where i'm just I'm, I'm i'm exactly like you and i know so many of you commenters are like you know you've got your favorite champion you want to see him on the list or you want to see them higher up and and that's fine that's that's this is meant to be educational. It's meant to maybe I'm trying to share some nuggets. I think people might not know about these champions or uses or those sorts of things. I am trying to get my opinion across. I'm definitely trying to get my server's opinions across and having fun 
and, and, and entertain while we do this and have a good time. But I, I'm also wanting to, I, this is the enjoyment of it, of us all talking about who we love and those sorts of things. He is amazing. He is truly amazing. And when I think about why I have him as number one is I think he very clearly handles problems, right? Penny Parker, she's not as big of a deal in the game right now because I think we've gotten some champions that can handle it, right? Gallon, uh, Gore's getting his buff, obviously Teddy, and there's others. There's other ways to handle her. But they seem designed to do that. But he also is clearly designed for a lot of other things too. He has some uh, dual immunity set that's obviously very important, can come up at literally any time. He can go unblockable, and that is a really big deal in this game. I, it, I mean, it just is. There's no way to, to, you know, no one's gonna argue that it's not. He heals back. I have often make mistakes with him, because I'm, I'm especially when trying to play very aggressively. And he heals back so much of that damage, especially if you have him specced into the right masteries. Additionally, his damage can be phenomenal. Now, you can hit into the block, and I actually like this. This is part of why I think keeps him balanced. I'm, you'll see when I do the top champions in the game, I have this uh, these kind of tiers where I just have flat broken. I have another one called flirting with broken. I'm looking at it right now. And he's not in that, but he's getting close. And I really love this. If you look at the signature ability, this armor penetration for each pierce buff, I think if he was, if he then never went unblockable when hitting into the block, I think he'd probably be broken. Because he would just be dominating in so many different ways of playing. And he could just sit there and wail on the block like a Valkyrie and do too much damage. I love that he actually eventually goes unblockable. It's a pain to deal with on defense, which, oh yeah, he's also a phenomenal defender. So he seems exceptionally well made for handling problems that they've just recently sent us. And he's also got a ton of utility that I think they're almost definitely going to throw us at some point. Or even if they don't intend to, he's going to be able to handle. Because keep in mind, and I used him to solo an EOP, I think it was EOP Hercules. And I still was really kind of learning to play uh, Hulkling. And I definitely didn't fully grasp the node. And I soloed it. And one of the big reasons was because of that power gain he gets whenever he converts one of his cosmic charges and creates those buffs. So it's not the power gain of, let's say, Hyperion, but it is substantial, and it just naturally happens by playing with him. So his flow is also amazing, meaning just he's well-made, but also you just play him, and the good things keep happening. I think he's going to be very hard for them to slow down, but I also think he's in that sweet spot where they don't need to try to just counter him. He's not breaking the game. He's just maybe getting his toe near that line. He's phenomenal. He's amazing. He's my favorite champion of 2022. I'm so, I was genuinely happy that my server had him as number one. He's going to show up in the top champions in the whole game. For those of you who've pulled him, I know I made all those videos early. Some people were like, I don't know what you're talking about. You're a moron, whatever. And those other people were like, I see it, dude. And I'm so excited to see so many of you out there with your Teddies, with your Hulklings. That's his name, Teddy. Uh, with your Hulklings, rank fours, high sigs, unawakened, rank threes. People celebrating, showing that they've pulled them. It just feels good because I know we all enjoy this game. We like doing, uh, doing well in this game and beating the fights that they send to us really does feel great. So... Let me know what you think we got right. Let me th know what you think we got wrong. Ultimately, me and the server definitely agree on the number one champion. And for the most part, we had our tiers pretty much in alignment. So it's not really a shock. Banner stellar year for the game in 2022. Really looking forward to re uh, checking in on this, though, in six months. Seeing what's evolved. I'm pretty sure Hulkling's still going to be at the top. But who has gotten closer to him? Thank you so much for watching. Take care. I hope you either learned something we're entertained, or even better, a little bit of both. Don't forget to like, subscribe. Thanks so much for watching. Take care.